you're doing something wrong. So. Ah, uh, Gyroist. Okay, we've seen this from Empire quite a bit, actually. They've been running a lot of Gyro. One of the very few teams that do, but it's an odd pick send against Doom, because... Yeah, Doom's good at shutting down every carry, but he's especially good against Gyro. If you flat cannon, you get Doomed. Flat cannon's disabled, so... I guess you still have to relocate out to kind of live through that, Doom, but... I do find it a slightly curious pick. Yeah, when, um, oh, the other thing with Empire is when they've been running, it's almost always with Faceless Void for mags. They have great setup for the gyrocopter roll. Yeah, and in addition to that, they also... The IO pick, or the Witch Doctor pick, rather, first of all gives the Rave a great trialing, but it's also a way of dealing with uh, the IO tandem, right? And if you're running IO with a short-range hero, the chance that they get exposed to the cask is actually fairly good if he isn't very careful, so... We just sick needs to be a little bit cautious on the IO here with uh, how he positions himself relative to the gyro. And well, apart apart from that, like PR's picks make sense. It's not that. It's just this is not for me that good of an IO game. When you look at raids heroes, the ways they have already when IO got picked, it got picked into Jakiro and Naga, who are both really good at just disengaging. You see the relocate, you drop an ice path, you run. You see the relocate, you drop song of the siren, and you run. Even the cask is good when they relocate it. You can actually turn it on them, so... Kind of peculiar. I'm looking forward to seeing how, uh, how PR pull it off. Yeah, I, when it comes to team fights right now, we just have to favor Rave if it's equal levels in farm. Way more control. The Doom to give them the plus one edge, and... Well, PR, they more seem to excel at just spreading the map. Even though they don't have, like, that, that one... I don't know, that one, like, hero they can just go around finding solo kills too easily. There is a Batrider, and... That rider in relocate, pretty powerful duo, and maybe that's the plan to just kind of spread the map, prevent Ray from ever getting that epic song and the Witch Doctor Ultimate into Ice Pet team fight. But we'll have to see how it plays out for now. We'll go ahead and introduce the teams on the side of the Power Rangers. We've got J4, your support Shadow Shaman, we just Zick, will be on the Wisp, Moon, Safely and Gyro, towards the mid lane of Shakeshell, so the solo mid lane will be the choice, and that puts Special Cat as your off lane. That rider, he actually bought some support items because all he's got right now is tangos and a clarity. And on the side of Rave, we have Cast playing the Witch Doctor. Or did he drop his boots somewhere and I'm just missing them? Uh, I'm no. not sure. I think you might be right because Io has a lot of gold, so I think they just want to fast something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> not really a bottle game because he's not really mid. I'm, I'm not sure what's going on right now. Alright, uh, well Ninja Bogey will be on your Vengeful Spirit, normally known for his core play. And of course a lot of these raid players are actually from the Philippines, so if you're not familiar with them, uh, pretty well-known players on uh, some Pinoy teams, MSI in the past for cast, and uh, we've got Rio, we'll be playing your Jakira, that puts Chrissy into the jungle as the Doom, and then in the mid lane we'll go the Naga Siren of J.O. So Chrissy, not even going to try to lane top to start this off, but looks like he might head that way now. So yeah, what's our... our... Oh, did, uh, he must have dropped his boots somewhere. Just to block the wave better. I didn't see where they were, though. Okay, so, yeah, all the support items were bought by Shadow Shaman, and then okay. Io saved his goals. That must have been how they did it, but... Yeah, kind of, uh, kind of weird. I don't think I've really seen that before, someone dropping his boots like that, but... Um, I, I know some players think that it's just, it's good. Some offlaners think it's just easier to creep up when you don't have the extra boot speed. Um, they find it just easier to do, so... I've, I've seen mm -hmm. on the radiant offlane. For some reason, I've just never seen anyone do it on the Dire. Maybe because they just start the jungle so often. Yeah, well, it, ma it makes sense. If you're used to doing it that way, then, then why not? There's no loss. The chance that your boots get stolen if you hide them in, like, here... <laughs> Pretty much a, not. A million games. Someone <laughs> will gank you there and take your boots. To be fair, if this was that one out of a million game, it's not like, oh, just an online match. They've traveled to China before. Yeah. So <laughs> that would suck, but uh, not going to be the case. So early on, this is a, a perfect eight versus eight and seven Jakiro in the bottom lane. He's got eight to nine. Sorry, he's got more to nine than everyone else in the game. No, it's not played. On a crazy they go. They've got the tether chase power. There is a stomp from the Doom. I don't think they'll chase farther, but he's out of mana. And, oh, he can't do that again. If they catch him out one more time, that'll be first blood. Yeah, really nice, uh, really nice war stomp there to to stop the Jarrah's pursuit and. Does stay alive. At the same time, the bottom lane. We've also got level two on Cheshire Cat. He's going to be playing a one on two lane since it looks like Ninja Boogie is. I'm not really sure what Ninja Boogie is, is aiming for here. He's kind of running around a little bit. Going to take this little centaur creep to make the creep camp respawn there, but 
Not too much gank potential, I think. Naga Siren doesn't have Ensnare. I'm not even sure J.O. is going to skill it. He might just do the classic thing in mid where you skip it entirely. No, he skilled it at level 4. So maybe they're looking for a kill mid soon with Avenge Smoke, actually. Might happen really soon. Because J.O. won't have mana. They can get this kill, too. Like I think he's just low enough. Oh, although Ninja Boogie is only level 1. Ah, they could really use the Wave of Terror here, but... Let's see. He's setting up for potentially Cheshire Cat. Meanwhile, he's going to make this move into the jungle. They did drop the magic wood board, which I guess in this case almost hurts him because he could stand to farm that smoke yet. But for now, he's just going to do a bit of stacking of the radiant jungle. And now head towards their their big creep. I think he might be hunting for the doom, although the doom is currently top. So yeah, so some, some kind of unusual movements here for both teams, really. I think he's mainly looking for whether Rave has been stacking, because Venge has been so much missing, he's thinking maybe she's stacking the jungle for the Naga, and then he wants to steal the camps, but he just checked and there's nothing going on. I think he's gonna steal it anyway. It's one of the safest places on the map for him to be, to be honest, right now, especially when, when Venge shows. There's almost no risk involved in this, because if the mid laner moves, it's pretty obvious, and he'll see the, the Witch Doctor right now here moving towards him, so he knows exactly what's going on. Meanwhile, Cass, going to check... Uh... Potentially check to see where he is, but not finding him. Now waiting for the four minute rune is Cheshire Cat will begin to farm that camp. And he'll get close to level three off of this one. So he's actually doing all right in the offlane. The Doom from Chrissy, a bit better. Uh, already three and three quarters, but that is the radiant advantage. Just they smoke and Ninja Boogie's revealed mid. J4 in position to reveal that. So great game sense there. Just expecting that timing and well, the gank will not succeed. It's funny to look at the CS chart, how four heroes have 20 plus, and then the next one on the board is four CS. There's often like a little bit more on one of the offlaners, so someone going into the jungle, or one of the supports pulling, but it's all about those few cores as well. Okay, I was not expecting that to even happen, so I wasn't yeah, even looking there. Uh, they just ran him down. Liquid yeah, fire, haste. So dual breath, the right reason they got that kill. That burn damage is really deceptive. It's like, okay, I think I'm gonna live. Uh, oh, no, I'm not. <laughs> Still taking down to the DOT. Yeah, that's a nice kill for them. And um, your Bat Rider at this point quite far behind compared to the Doom. Chrissy already level four. The offlane Bat will get a, a good wave of experience, or at least half a wave. But yes, and he's struggling. And and to, to top it off, like even if he wasn't late, there's 20 freaking denies on this Chikiro. Oh no, oh. he might have teamed into his death again here. Uh, no, no cask. They have a dual breath, but I guess they just like they can't push him over the cliff and well, they're just gonna push the tower instead. They've got an early plan to heal and they're using it to take this tower early. It's a pretty big investment by Ray, but looks like they should at least bring the tower down to about 30 HP if not kill it off. Yeah, they're gonna get this, and I don't think he can even try to deny it here. So very easy last to come the witch doctor. Good start overall for Ray. First they got the first blood and the first tower, and J.O. is also out farming the lichen in the mid lane and you know, Naga is that type of hero where if you if you get off to a good start and you get that fast radiance and there's no pressure on you directly that the, the game is going to end soon, you will take off. And there's no real way of dealing with Naga in this game apart from Fat Cannon. And I don't think that's enough. So if they even get towers in addition to her free farm, we could look at a really early radiance for Jo. And to be honest, I'm worried for PR if that happens. They kind of need to make something happen before that radiance comes up. Get some yeah. towers. I'm really with you there, Sid. I feel like they need to do something soon, whether it's a relocate gank as soon as Wisp hits 6, your Batrider's not going to come online for a long time, but or, or maybe even Sneaker Roach, but if they can't do one of those, then I worry for them. Rave are off to a really good start. I mean, it's not just the Naga. The Jiro's free farming, their team fight's going to be scary, Doom's on track to a fairly fast level 6. The mid game of Rave, they're running a Naga, but the supporting cast is very strong there. And I'm feeling like PR just won't win head-on engagements. They're going to have to spread the map and kind of outmaneuver Rave as opposed to beating them head-on. The good thing that PR have got going for themselves is that Gyro is the main farmer, and he's doing really well. I think they even just farmed a stack here at the hard camp or something. Or, well, maybe not, but... Well, 50 uh, yeah, they, 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 were, they were probably sure there got as well. A stack there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so... Yeah, He's looking good, and he's level 6, so when Gyro, or sorry, when I is level 6 and they can start relocating together, I think we're going to see some, some kill attempts early on, but it's still we're still looking at a situation where, if nothing happens, Rave are probably fine with what's going on right now, and oh, maybe not, maybe they actually want to be on the aggressive here, 
pretty peculiar gank though with Venge level 2, Witch Doctor level 4, and a Doom who isn't 6 yet. I don't think they can even kill this Jar. I think that's gonna backfire really hard. Well, they're gonna try for it. It is currently nighttime, so not a ton of vision of this rotation, but just look at the positioning boot. He's also got phase boots already online. There's still no Doom up. It's a very difficult dive, and they're even bringing like and well, not there, but towards that lane. They'll TP in a fourth hero now. You said four protect one, and in some ways it feels like a dead style, but hey, it's four pushing top creating space while Jo farms the mid, so kind of that like for one. That, that EG classic. Well, not classic, but like that, you know, the new EG4 Protect one. It's the farming solo mid, which we've with seen them eight, do less of lately. With an 8-minute mech on a Jakiro at level 4 do, uh, Liquid Fire, I don't see why they need to stop here. The fighting potential for PR is just not there yet with a level 5 Batrider. So maybe they continue here and try to put a little extra pressure. That early mech is just such a big deal here, because it's one of the best yes. items in an early mid-game situation against the Gyrocopter, who's so much about that spread damage. You could actually just tank up the cooldown and use the mech right now and maybe continue the push. Or, it's already been dropped to slow it down. Them. They'll get the liquid fire on the tower, bring it down. They have 200 health, and, and Cheshire Cat is still 1200 gold off his blink. Look at the jungle, there's a double stack, and he could farm these. No gallop so far, so that's good news for him, but. Uh, I. I uh, it's gotta be like an early, well, once the back hits his blink, they have to make something happen. They have to locate, or they have to sneak a rush, I'm just... The, it feels like they're surprisingly the ones under a ton of early pressure, despite... Like, you see Doom Naga, you expect that enemy team to farm, but... They're ever taking the fight to them on the back of the Shikiro. Yeah, so far, so far that Skate Flame Jakiro has really done everything it needs for this game, and it's, it's doing even more now. They rotated mid, they saw the TP of the Batrider to the top lane, so they know if anyone shows up, it's a 4 on 4. And another free tower, I don't know what PR can actually do about this. I think they're just totally caught off guard. Like, it see, this was actually almost the identical draft to what Rafe used in their last match. I just looked it up, uh, like, in the middle of the draft, and the only difference is they had Brew instead of Doom. But, in this case, Doom's probably even better just to punish the gyro pick, and... <laughs> It seems like PR just weren't well, expecting this strategy. There's stacks stolen now by J.O. up here. Everything is going Rave's way. This is a huge economic win. They're behind by a thousand experience, but four thousand gold lead. And the only reason for the discrepancy in XP is that the the Venge and Witch Doctor are fairly low level, level three and four in comparison to the Shadow Shaman IO level fives. But as long as they're not six, these levels aren't that significant. It's at that point that PR need to make their big comeback off those level sixes and the blink on bat, but. It's going to be such a late blink now that his camp got stolen too, and they even, look at it, they even leave the skeleton here to block the camp another time. Just nothing going the way of Cheshire Cat. And they still don't have relocate, they still have a blink dagger, so it's like, there's no one who can really go around the map turning this around. <laughs> Maybe we'll see a dive on the top lane from J4, but I mean, he can't kill the secure alone, he'll need backup. They're bringing Weejah's second move all the way top lane, it's almost like a desperation gank if that's really what they're searching for. But, yeah, it looks like they'll go for J4's level 6 instead. And the best thing about getting these early towers in is they not only do they punish the bat taking over the jungle, Jo has drums, and he's got 2600 gold, a lot of that tower gold. He is very close to a relic. We're looking at like a, what, 16, 17, probably like a 17 minute radiance or so if he keeps this up. Yeah, and with a drum, that's a really good time. Uh, even less. I think he could get it at, like, 15 if he keeps up this pace right now. He's got 8 CS per minute, as well as uh, they've taken 3 towers. If they get a tier 2 on top of that, he's going to look good, but... Oh, this is so risky for Shade. So he's got no backup in sight. They are shooting a few heroes top, but they have to know that the Lycan's off the map. And there's 5 heroes right near the pit. Jakiro's in position. I think they might realize now. No, Jay is still pushing in mid. But even if they get the rush, they're giving up the tower bottom. They're going to take a ton of damage on the tier 2 mid. That's potentially four or five towers down before they even claim an Aegis. They're pushing the tier 1. Already the tier 2 bottom falls and the rotation from Rave? No, they're TPing out. They don't know about the rush. Or they don't care. And three get caught by the song. This could be very ugly. Doom's ready. Are they gonna Doom the West? There's no relocate available. They can save that for Moon. He gets netted up two dead in a matter of seconds. A third should follow. Moon, no way out of this. The call out just easily tanked. PR getting crushed. Three heroes now dead in that fight. And there's just no trade off, really, aside from the Aegis, I suppose. But. I've never seen a team get an Aegis at 12 minutes and felt 
less optimistic about the chances that I do right now. <laughs> it's like the only thing they've got going for them. They haven't taken a tower with Lycan, they've barely even scratched one. Alright, top, okay, top's half, but I don't think you're satisfied with that if you're PR right now, and in addition to that, just overall great play there from J.O. Precasting the song, TPing in, catching all three, and then the beautiful Ice Path follow-up there coming out from, uh, from our Ryo, or I'm not sure how to pronounce the name, it's pretty difficult. Ryo, I just call him Ryo. Ryo, yeah, maybe it's better. Yeah. Less, less potential for me to pluck through it, anyway. Yeah. Uh, and their jungle's invaded, too. Like, not only did they lose the early map control, but Rave are keeping it that long. And it seems to me, if they want to just five minute a tower, they still can. And if they want to farm and try and take this late, like, they've got Naga Doom. Your late game's very fearsome, and the supporting cast ain't half bad, either. It just, a lot of when you look at PR's draft, it just seems like a mix and match of these heroes are really good, but where's the actual synergy, right? You've got a Lycan who's a top pick, no doubt about it. Io is a top pick for certain teams. Shadow Shaman regarded as one of the best supports right now. Bat Riders are very strong offlane in the, at least in the Western meta. And then you've got Gyro, who's a good duo partner for the Io. But these five heroes combined, it's kind of reminding me. Do you remember that game at TI3 where when Zenith didn't ban any heroes? and the enemy team picked like all the top tier heroes but their lineup just didn't really work that well together oh uh, yeah that was the, reminiscent of that i feel that was the game where the, i it was against ig i believe and ig ran a four position bat and this was when bat was like super super broken but it was just too greedy Seth just took over their jungle i forget what their heroes were but they were just constantly fighting when the bat was trying to farm the woods and there weren't really any adjustments available and zenith just ended up crushing them so yeah, it's it does it feels a little bit like that for sure. And I, I think you mishmash is the perfect word to, to describe it. It's like you get a little bit of push, a little bit of gank, not that much team fight, and there's no like oh my god this hero just counters that one so hard factor either. And it's where they didn't win their lanes is the other thing, and now they're kind of up against it. Still they're gonna push though. They do have like they do have Sean awards and PR despite that six k gold deficit, they're ahead on experience slightly and. They do have the power of tower clear, which they're going for now. Yeah, they're sending in Shotslow here, who does have level 2 shapeshift and the Aegis, so... Pretty safe for him to go in here and uh, try to take this tower. He's slightly scared because there's heroes missing, but now they're showing the top lane, so this tower is a goner. Finally, PR get on the board with a tower here. The problem is, they're probably trading their tier 2 top, and look at Jo. What, did you said 17 or 18 minutes on that Radiance? I think we're closer to the 15, actually. If he gets the tower, so he has it, almost. Oh my god, and they got an Observer Ward here as well. They smoked earlier there, and, and it was spotted. And now again, when Cheshire Cat tries to move in, he can't. Tower goes the way of the vent, still. He'll have it in like two waves. So we're looking at a 16 minute Radiance, maybe 16 and a half to 17 by the time it's delivered. But either way, really fast, and... Then you're liking Shaman and Wisp, your, your split push attempts are going to be largely thwarted just by illusions cutting the waves, and well, I wonder where PR goes from there. It's, it's already just feeling like they don't have a grip on the game. I mean, it's, it's one thing that they have... It would be fine if they had some sort of really heavy push that came online right now so they could go and try to end the game against the Radiance Naga. I'm thinking games like a TI4 with the Pugna or something like that where you no, don't necessarily have to take the towers extremely early, but when you have to hit the sweet spot and then at that point you start taking all the towers. But I don't really feel like they have that lineup. They have a lineup that takes one tower and then they have to wait for the Shaman words again. It's not happening without those. And that's just too slow already. And it's kind of strange to say that in a 16 minute game that it's not good enough that you take a tower every two minutes, but Jo is going to be progressing so damn fast that by the time they take all the tier 1s and tier 2s, if they were to do that that way, Jo would already have two or three items. Yeah, from here, Boots of Travel can come out very quickly. And the thing is, like, the only way they can even feasibly gank is with Lasso, which they're hunting for Chrissy oh, now. Chrissy. But he pops the jump charge, the reload, he's going to be way out of range. They might even go back in on this. Ninja Boogie's getting aggressive here. Support's coming from the south. It's Jakiro against the Yules off. Catching Cheshire Cat first, then the follow up's done. Look, just leave him for dead. They lose their bat rider. And the Aegis took Spire in one minute's end, and they've yet to really take anything positive with it, aside from the tier one mid. 
Yeah, they're looking for the tier 1 top here. At the least they force some rotation here out of Brave. And if they get the tower, I guess they can be somewhat okay with the trade-off. Although the top tier 1 tower for the Radiant is kind of the most useless tower in the game. But never mind. We're gonna go on Moon there. Relocates on cooldown, as they know. So Chrissy will be picking Moon easily here, I believe, with any sort of duels there. Yeah. Yeah. It's a level 3 overcharge, but it's not gonna matter. They'll lose him, and Reach of Sick also on the run. Ninja Pokey has a swap ready to go, just goes for the stun. Liquid Fire follow up, another kill for Rave. Wiping the floor with PR, not winning all three lanes, basically. They got the better trade out of the off lane, they shut down the bat in the safe lane, they outform the mid, they've outganked them, they've outpushed them. The only thing they haven't done is take Roach, but. Rave are making quite a showing here for this Korean slash slash Filipino team, whatever you want to call them. Uh, either way, they're they're killing it, Sin. And, uh, honestly, if you had asked me, I would have said I think PR look like the stronger team coming into this, just based on results more. I haven't really had a chance to watch Rave, but man, they're just getting hammered right now. Yeah, on this paper before this game, I don't know what odds I would give PR, but definitely well in their favor. And this just isn't even close. <laughs> And it's I'm actually wondering what the Dota 2 lounge odds are right now. <laughs> well, 69-31. It's just game one. Yeah, it is a best of three. But what's odd to me is just that this draft is literally four out of the five heroes that are at in their last, like their very last game. And I, I mean, I guess I'm wondering, did PR do like any scouting of them in advance, or were they just not afraid of this strategy and kind of underestimated it? I guess we'd have to interview them to find out. They're up against it now, that's for sure. It's kind of, how often do you see a 20 minute game in which the team with Batrider and Io haven't made a kill? Like, it's <laughs> it's kind of unreal actually how effectively Rave are playing and how how little PR are getting to do around the map. And it's not that it's not that Batrider and Io aren't trying, it's just it's very hard for them to find openings when there's constantly so much vision being generated by Rave's pushing, right? They have the split pushing Naga, constantly pushing out waves and giving vision in the jungle. They have decent warding. And the early towers being taken by Jakiro just meant that it seemed like PR just never really got online to start getting a grip on the map, and it's very hard to gank if you have all your waves push pushed against you all the time. Well, where do you go from here if you're PR? It looks pretty bleak, but obviously they're not GGing out, they're, they're going to try and fight it, so... Like, what's your angle of attack? Well, the next Roshan, we don't know when is up but I think PR wants to try to wait for that and then make a fight happen, but I, I don't even think that's the best way of, of doing it. Oh, uh, Cheshire Cat. And he runs out. right into the vent. She blinks oh, out in the nick of time. Blink. Quick reactions there. They need Song to, to start. Fight, oh, no. Be, oh, no. They've lost two, so potentially. The Shaman's caught out in the trees. I don't know if they realize he's still there, but he's blinked in and revealed his position. Dropping the wards. Change low. Dropping low to this. The rotation comes in. They net him and hold him in place. Level death to secure the kill. Look at it go. Easily they bring down two. They may lose the Wisp as well. That's three down, and now Moon's on the run. Doomed and just absolutely useless as a hero when he gets doomed, especially without the Wisp backing him up. The lone survivor is that, and well, Sins, they got a kill. But it was a very, very costly kill. Well, they're closing in. Relatively. <laughs> I'm not sure the graphs agree with you, dude. Another big win for Rave there. Both Golden experience-wise, taking about... Yeah, they got about 4,000 of each from that fight. And I, I don't know. I feel like Naga in this type of game is just... Based on my experience... Naga cannot lose this game anymore without making massive mistakes, and the way J.R. has been playing this game so far has been pretty much textbook. So I don't, I don't really see much whole PR at this point apart from going for something like a desperation smoke, try to find some sort of team fight on their terms, and then should they manage and get a good team fight, there's a little hope left. Should they fail, just call GG and go next. Don't wear yourself out. It's a best of three. You can reset and try it for the next game instead of just fighting a, for a lost cause. Right? This is. It's not, like, as far as Golden Experience territory goes in terms of theory, this isn't the biggest comeback in history if they do it. It's more just the lineup that being behind 11k against the Naga in a 20 minute game, you just don't win. It's just how the game works. And they just don't have the kind of life. Like, it's 
it's hard to lose that game as Naga in general, but especially this lineup. Like, kind of they, they have Batrider, that's it. There's no Doom, there's no, like, Global Silence or incredible control to deal with the Naga. And, well, we're gonna have a big fight out the road pit. Chessy, or sorry, Chessy will blink it. He pops the Shivas as he does, so still has the Doom ready to go. And now they hold everyone in position with Salmo. Let it end the Doom. Roaring forward, he got off the Doom on the Gyro. That keeps Moon out of the fight. Can't BKB, even if he could, it wouldn't matter. This Gyro just can't get anything accomplished in the fights. Chrissy still chasing Chicho back. He crits him, almost finishing him off. Like that Doom all just manned up on a like and almost killed him. And well, now they'll go in and collect their rush with Liquid Fire minus armor from Wave of Terror. This will be a quick and simple rush. Not to mention the the pack leaders are on the squad. We're able to take the Aegis. That's a big mechanic that PR were counting on, and it's not available to them. Can they maybe snipe it with the Wolves? Nope, not even that. The Rave were prepared for that as well. They've got a gem on Ninja Boogie. Nothing sent. Absolutely this is cool. Nothing in their way. Aegis on Jakiro. This, like, happens never. <laughs> Look at his items, though. Like, I, I love that. Four staff, Yules. You could probably get two off in a fight. All his spells are spammable, and Liquid Fire is really strong. Yeah, I... You know... I'm trying to look at, I'm trying to find some sort of positive angle for PR here, and I can't find one. So, you know, I generally don't want to call a game over until it's over, but I think it's time for PR to look forward to the next game and try to think about what to do, because unless some sort of miracle happens, they will be losing this match. So, what is, apart from their own strategy, not really mixing, like, not really working too well together, honestly, what what's the key point that Rave did really well, and how do you deal with it? I feel like the Jakiro was really crucial this game. I think they really underestimated Rave's willingness to just four or five man early. Like that seemed to be kind of the biggest issue. Like imagine if their offlaner this game was something like a Void. Like at the very least, you can look towards potentially a. Well, maybe he wouldn't get the levels this game. Oh, they'll catch out one mid. J4 gets caught. Yule Scepter drops down into a dice path and dies, but. They're gonna death ball at mid. Uh, yeah, I don't know if I don't know if Void offlane would have worked, but like I don't know. I'm just kind of thinking like they needed some team fight control if they wanted to defend those towers. And a lot of the Korean teams, like Sid, you look at MVP Phoenix, they ran a lot of five man strats even before they were all the rage. Had he ended CI4, a lot of death drop the picks before she was particularly popular. And I think we're seeing something. It's a little bit different with the Naga spice added to it, but still a pretty strong five man push overall. And, I think PR have to respect that Rave are willing to commit to some strategy along those lines. Yeah, and the That's thing, kind of the where thing I'm for PR right now is, yes, it's the best of three, but they're behind 0-1-1, and if Rave have any sort of different type of strategy pre prepared, they could pull that out in game two. And then with PR adapting to this style, Rave can basically take uh, a pocket strategy win and be through to the top four. So it's very dangerous to lose the first game like that to not... What looks like not respecting what the enemy team is pretty much known for playing. Uh, and if they try to counterpick it, my opinion on it is that they really fail. This does not seem like a counterpick at all. <laughs> yeah, I'm with you there. Trish Hardcat caught up by the Yules. It's another kill as they do moon and he's out of the fight. I'll try and stay alive for a bit longer. The Witch Doctor kills off a second as the Shaman drops. Ward's not even enough to bring down Ninja Boogie. Not the song. I'm not even sure they really need to do this to go for the kills, but uh, it'll do it. And, yeah, it's it's GG. I mean, like, um, they are probably just discussing their next game plan. Honestly, it wouldn't surprise me if they've just been discussing game two for the past five minutes. And there you have it. GG. Grave take it easily, but like you said, it is a best of three. It wasn't that long of a game, and they knew this one was over for probably 10 minutes, so... Shouldn't get too upset, just focus on game two, and... You know, maybe they just pull out a completely different draft. Draw Visage, you know? <laughs> Something different. Well, this was just, for me, a 100% strategic loss. Uh, yes, they also got outplayed, but I have a hard time seeing the way the lanes got placed and the way the early game panned out, what their lineup was supposed to do.